<clears throat> My name is Anka Agarwal, and I am a student at the University of California, Berkeley, and this is a demo of what I had done for the company Brilliant.org uh, over the summer. So um, obviously this stuff is proprietary, so I'm not showing the actual code, but I will show like the end result and some of the graphs we were able to make. Uh, I will also highlight um, the frameworks used, but that, that's kind of it. Um, yeah, so a little bit about Brilliant.org is that they're a math uh, and computer science and STEM, for the most part, educational startup. Uh, they have, if I go to their website, they have they have a lot of, they have quizzes that they use to, um, you know, like teach people, stuff like this. Uh, I was working on their multivariable calculus quiz, actually. I did some content creation for them. I did some, specifically I did some uh, content creation for their vectors, and I was able to use the visualizations that I developed to uh, help teach them the course. But for the most majority of my internship was software development, and what I developed was a first. The first month was pretty much um, me working in two D visual visualizations and learning the framework and the JavaScript necessary to uh, like like create like certain visualizations. Um, the second month was actually working in complete, we're designing a completely new API for 3D graphs, and we were, uh, me and my boss were working specifically in, like, cr for creating like multitude of graphs for this for this course specifically. So I will show both of those today. Uh, the first I'll show is 2D visualizations. So let's just go to localhost real quick and look at some of the things I've created. Um, so to give you an idea of uh, how the code base was before is uh, you could go into any one of these visualizations that are used and you could just um, move around. So basically what you could end up doing is basically have an equation and then have any number of sliders that could control that equation. But it was only a simple like function, a y in terms of like some function of it, y equals f of x. Uh, there was no like, um, no, nothing really super fancy. There's no like vector field, there's no parametric equations, there was none of that. So I, uh, and so there were not even like helper helper graphs and stuff like that. So I, I designed some of that stuff. Specifically, I designed um, vector fields, contour plots, parametric equations. Um, I designed um, helper, helper sort of like teaching sort of like graphs, which is like lines, like lines that stop at a certain point and uh, points and stuff like that. So let's get started. Um, so if we look at the example, we go down to graph examples. These are all some of the examples that were there. Uh, some of the ones I've created, I'll show you. So we can see, start at the vector field. Well, we can start with vectors. This is the first one. This is like one of the more simple ones that I've invented. So this, we start off with a, two, a vector, a line of this direction, line of this direction, line of this direction, and you're able to control the start and stop in points for each of each of these uh, x and y position. You also you can also control where they start and start as well. But this obvious this visualization didn't use that. So the next one um, we looked at were vector fields. So you could create this vector field d squared times sine x cosine x times p, and you could um, change it around and do stuff like that. Uh, another thing we did is we used uh, the equation they developed to parse into sort of certain aspects. You can parse into this notation, or as you'll see in the contour plots, you can parse into i plus j notation. Now this slider only controls the vector field, but it could control the parametric plot. However, there were uh, a decent amount of performance issues since we weren't using hardware accelerated. Um, uh, we were using D3 for this. We weren't using like anything like hardware accelerated. So the performance was a bit off. So this is a static image right now. Um, but uh, it is rendered using the marching squares algorithm, um, a 150 by 150. Basically you sample the grid in 150 by 150 squares and use the corner points of the squares to determine to use and use linear interpolation to determine like what the line segment going through that square would look like if there is one, and yeah, this has been generally how it looked. Um, this is a lot of fun to implement. Very very interesting algorithm that I really liked. Um, but yeah, uh, you can use this. You can add sliders to it to see like how what happens if you change like this and that. So that was pretty cool. Um, well, uh, after. Sure. So yeah, this was basic. This was the basis of my of what I sort of created. I also created um, oh yeah, I talked about parametric equations, which is like pretty simple, like ellipses, and you can also draw like regular like graphs as well. But it's none of that. Very very simple. Um, and 
then you could also draw uh, uh, you could also draw like simple graphic example lines like lines like these just like start and stop they could be dashed and just you just control like various aspects of their position I don't actually know what the equations are behind those but um, and then finally we I also did um, Uh, I also added custom standard academic expressions before you could only display equations in a certain style. Now you add it, you're able to add custom expressions like this and um, custom static and dynamic expressions to do whatever they want. So like dynamic expressions can have these values change, um, which is really cool in my opinion. So yeah, and I was able to use a lot of this, a lot of the new stuff that even I made to create like, oh, um, uh, visualization like this, where you could like go, go um, look for like orthogonality and stuff like that, and you get see what the V and Ws are, or you could go um, here and you'll be able to see like, oh, like what a projection looks like and stuff like that. So what is what is a, the purple is a projection of red onto the uh, onto, onto the blue, for instance. So yeah, um, this was a ton of fun, and it was really cool to see my visualizations actually appear in quizzes. Um, but for now, let's transition back, let's transition to the 3D graphs, which while they're currently not implemented, they will be in a couple months or so, um, because my internship has ended, unfortunately. But yeah, let's go, let's do a get, let's uh, change branches and then we'll check out what the 3D graph looks like. Uh, yeah, so just give us a bit. Great. Now, if we go to visualization and scroll down, there will be a couple new graphs that appear. Um, and these are the 3D graphs that I've made. So let's start simple. And so the first graph I made was a surface graph. This was a, so what we did is actually we worked in uh, WebGL and 3JS. So we used uh, 3JS for basically creating our geometry. And for some of the graphs, we had actually used the 3JS um, uh, like structure to create lines or planes or uh, specifically, or vectors or uh, points, because those were very easy to do and they didn't have very much geometry. But uh, when we had to create like large amounts of geometry from, for instance, the parametric curves or shaded regions or surface graphs where there wasn't an implicit geometry created, we actually used how to use the shaders. And that was a lot of fun actually, using using GLSL to create like hardware accelerated and see it run in real time really really fast. So let's start with a simple graph. So this is just basically tested like three, my three GS knowledge creating like simple lines. This, this wasn't a very hard, it's mostly just cylinder geometries that stretched through and you can create lines that go through any point as long as you specify the two points. Um, there is planes which rely on a normal vector and a point. So you have this. There's uh, points which are just spheres of radius whatever. There's um, vectors, which are a little bit harder because we had to control how the arrow shifted. So the arrow shouldn't get smaller or bigger, even if it's like up here. So it should be like less, but the arrow length itself should be compressed. So that was doing that was a bit of math, which is interesting. Um, so yeah, we were able to do that pretty nicely. And this is what the end result came out to be. Um, so that was the, basically the simpler graph. So let's move on to the first graph that I actually like had to work in a shader for, which was the surface graph. So uh, for all of our graphs, we use func shading. Um, you can see the func shading here. Uh, so the reason the graph is a little artifacting at the bottom is because uh, this graph is undefined because this is the graph, the square root of x plus, plus y squared, or this y is equal to the square root of x, uh, one minus x squared which is um, uh, the top half of the sphere, but this graph is defined in the, um, the graph like a negative one to one, so it's the entire plane, right? So 
the geometry here was not actually able to not render, so there's a little bit of artifacting as a result. However, this goes away if you were to use a parametric surface, which I will describe a little later. Um, so yeah, that uh, that's a surface graph. Um, now the second graph I did was the parametric curve graph, which is here, and this is um this is a graph that goes from negative one to one, um, and it's the graph, it's the parametric equation, negative, uh, negative t, or t, t, uh, t cubed. So from negative one to one, it goes simply like that. And yeah, it looks pretty simple. You can extend the, extend the uh, boundaries a little bit. You can play with like how that, how this works, but yeah, it's a simple uh, parametric equation. Uh, next was the shaded continuous region. So this was a bit difficult because we actually had to work on the Z buffer because we had transparent surfaces intersecting. And that does not play with nicely because of Z buffering. So we had to figure out how to render these transparent surfaces next to each other and as well and make sure the blending wasn't, um, wasn't too off. So this is how we, this is essentially how it worked, ended up looking where we had uh, blue for positive, red for negative, or reddish for negative. And yeah, this is um, I think this looks pretty nice. I mean, it's still had fong shading on both at both ends and stuff like that. Uh, the next graph I want to talk about is the shaded region Riemann sum graph. This graph, uh, basically was a Riemann sum um from two, between two surfaces. So this is between surface x is equal to x uh, y z is equal to zero, and the surface z is equal to x plus y squared. And you can you can change a lot of things. You can change like the the Riemann sum types. So you can start the lower left. This would be lower. This would be a little bit higher and stuff like that. And um, or you start with like upper right and all that stuff. Or you can change the bounds. You can have it only only on only defined on this side or this side. And you can do a lot of things, which is really cool. Uh, eventually, um, my, we want to implement sliders so we can change stuff in real time. However, that that framework has not just, just hasn't been developed yet. Um, However, but the, the graphs still are pretty cool and they look pretty nice. Um, oh, and then vector fields. These are fields of vectors. Uh, this we in this one to optimize we only use geometry once, uh, the the cone and the cylinder geometry once, and for the rest we uh, we just render this like however many times necessary. Like in this case, I believe it's like one twenty five because it's five, it's five by five by five cube. And so yeah. Um, all right, and then last one was a parametric surface. In this case, you'll see no artifacting because, like, this is a very simple parametric surface. This can actually go up in 3D as well, but there's no artifacting because we um, were able to implement it right. And yeah, so this is um, how this is basic parametric surface how it looks, and I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so parametric surface is basically an R2 to R3 graph. You map x, y to u, v, and then u, v to, you know, like, whatever three points you want. And then that's essentially how we were able to create these really cool parametric surfaces. Uh, yeah, so this is um, my entire 3D graph uh, thing um, in a nutshell. Uh, I hope you enjoyed um, or, like, or, yeah, hope you enjoyed, like, this presentation, this demo. Um, if you want to contact me, please contact me at aagarwal underscore 601 at berkeley.edu. Thank you.